Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Power Cat Roundtable. We're here joined once again by Tate Steinlogge, the football beat writer, former collegiate sports editor John Zetmeyer, currently the uh, student assistant for the Topeka Capital Journal, and also staff writer Emilio Rivera. Now to step into to K State a little bit, they're four and one, standing right outside the top ten. They win, top ten looks pretty good. They lose, they're hanging in that 15 to 25 range for a good chunk for the rest of the season barring some unforeseen circumstance. So, Tate, tell me, what will it take for K-State to knock off Oklahoma on Saturday? Uh, I've been saying it like the last week that we've been talking about. It. It's going to be turnovers, absolutely. Uh, you look at the game in 2012 in Norman, forced a big turnover to get a touchdown early in the game, sack, fumble. Uh, that was huge, and I think that's what's going to be the turning point. Because I think, when you look on paper, they're actually very even teams. You look at the wide receiver position, K-State actually has an edge. Mm -hmm. Running back's position, Oklahoma has an edge. Quarterback-wise, I think you have to give it to K-State. So there's so many variables going on right now, but I think these teams are even. So I think it's going to come down to turnovers. and uh, It's going to be interesting to see if K-State can do that in a hostile environment. I think athletically and physically. You know, Auburn was a very physical group up front. Oklahoma was a very physical group up front. Uh, both of them run extremely well. John, you're you're kind of you're feeling like Oklahoma's might bounce back now, stepping back into their home turf. What? What? Yeah, just go into that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, if you look at their schedule, they they didn't play too well against Texas. Uh -huh. um, they didn't play too well against West Virginia, obviously. But the last time they looked really well was against Tennessee. They they really just put the hammer down on Tennessee, and that was the last time they played at home. That's and three and three Tennessee. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, but as we know, there's they've still got SEC talent. You know, it's not a terrible team. So uh, yeah, I mean, K State's. When K-State won in 2012, well, that was the first time a ranked team had beaten Bob Stoops in Norman since he'd been there. So it just shows how tough it is to beat that team. And kind of what Tate was saying is I'd say my key for if K-State wants a win is playing that bend but don't break defense. I mean, that's what, that's what we Absolutely. saw the Wildcats do in 2012 is they'll give up that middle of the field. But, but once you get them in that red zone, you got you to gotta make touchdowns field goals. And then for K-State, they got to turn field goals into touchdowns. So they can't do what they did against them. They have to do – play hard like they did against Auburn, but obviously they can't do those little things wrong what they did against Auburn. Well, the keys to the game for K-State is simple. Stop that run game. They, Oklahoma has to be the most well-rounded team in the Big 12. We've seen that in the press conference today. But they are a very unsturdy table. You take up one leg in the running game and they will collapse. You need a force tonight to pass. Yeah, well, we just have to you know, be very sound um, on defense, obviously with our fits and, and our techniques and just um, and just play our game plan uh, to, to the best of our ability. So just as a May as an over-under, where do you guys feel like K-State will have to hold Oklahoma in the rushing game to have a chance to win? Give a number, just an estimate if you, if you will. Yard, and, yards yeah. wise? Man. I mean, it'd, it'd be tough to say hold them under 100 yards, obviously, yeah. on the road. I would say maybe 150. Granted, it depends on what Trevor Knight does. If you allow OU to run for 150 yards, but you can keep Trevor Knight yeah. pretty pretty low in that passing game, then I think that's probably quite feasible number. Because yeah, I don't. I mean, as we saw last year, K State threw the ball around against OU. Mm -hmm. So if K State can do that in Norman, then I mean, maybe maybe they don't necessarily have to play perfect defense if they can score points. Uh, yeah, I think you looked at Auburn. Auburn isn't you know Auburn can throw the ball, but they're traditionally a running. Uh, team they held them to 128 yards and I believe it was rushing so I think 150 is a good a good number and honestly if you do that you're going to force Knight to throw uh, if you can stop the underneath routes Ben but do not break defense you're going to make him throw deep and he's struggled to throw deep this season uh, last year when Oklahoma came here Knight threw underneath routes for like the first half all day so uh, he, that's not touchdowns though so if you can stop that and hold them and limit them there uh, they're going to have a tough time throwing deep so it's 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 crazy. You know, when you add the capabilities of Trevor Knight to run the ball, uh, you know, he had 80, whatever it was, 87 yards against us last year rushing the ball. So you, you put that with, uh, uh, you know, a running game. They, they had a significant running game. We did not defend the run very well at all last year. Well, and we'll wrap up uh, score predictions. I've got, I'm going 28-23 K-State. So what about you? I'm going to go 35-27 K-State, even though I, I, I was swinging both ways. Oh, man. Uh, Amelia, you go first. <laughs> think. I'm going to go 35-31 K-State. End of the game, fourth quarter, they'll K-State them out and come back. And I'll go 28-27 Oklahoma, actually. So it looks like no, it'll no, be. No, no, no. 31-27 Oklahoma. Somebody's got to kick a field goal. I'll go 31-27 <laughs> Oklahoma. Well, it looks like, as you can tell, it'll be a great game on Saturday. And Norman will have three riders down there. Uh, just keeping you guys up to date on coverage. Stay tuned to our website after the game. 
their stories will be up uh, as soon as we can get them there. And so for Tate, for John, for Emilio, I'm Adam Suderman. Thanks for joining us uh, this week, and we'll see you again as we prep for Texas next week.